in today's session. I was able to get a working development environment where I can use um, the Godot engine and editor in conjunction with VS Code, which gives me a little bit better, or in some ways a lot better, uh, developer ergonomics, things like the Git integration, uh, Copilot, linting, and um, auto completions uh, are just much richer in VS Code. Uh, it's basically been developed and used in so many different languages and by so many different developers. I think it's just a much more mature um, integrated development environment than we could really kind of, in fairness, expect out of the uh, integrated window editor in the engine itself. But, you know, some features are going to be lacking, like the sidebar inspector and the navigation to the code documentation and stuff like that. So at the very least, we'll be going back and forth between them. However, I was able to get the game to run from um, a debug profile here, run and debug. So that was a good step. Yeah, where I can write code and debug it directly from VS Code, including its debugging console, I think should work. Um, the Godot tools does give you a bit of, a uh, sort of emulates um, at least the Godot scene tree. So that's already a good start. I think they may have some plans to get an inspector and kind of take some of the elements um, inspector node and uh, history tabs perhaps into the VS code, which would be really cool in my opinion. I hope that happens. Uh, but I understand that would be a lot of work, I, you know, and I understand that this isn't for uh, Godot core developers to make the Godot editor in Godot itself. So I'm not uh, trying to detract from that. I'm just very comfortable with VS code. And uh, as a second uh, step, we were able to get an initial, some initial traction on a dialogue task for our open source project for the non-player character dialogue system. It meets most, if not all, of the kind of uh, requirements we were looking at. You can define um, dialogues, you know, it's robust and fairly easy to use. Uh, it integrates with the game state, so you can like define and modify variables. And um, we can define uh, scripts with, uh, for each character either all scripts for a character in one file and triggering them um, via the dialog identifier or however we choose to organize it. It seemed fairly flexible as well as having the NPC avatar and things like that and some nice character effects. Uh, I did take a look at Dialogic. It only runs in 3.5. They don't have a full release for 4.0 yet. That'll maybe happen this year. Seems like it's pretty close. Uh, but I, in the meantime, I did find the alternative solution for dialog nodes, and that's what we'll go with. So yeah, just summarizing what we got today and uh, what we got done today. And this is going to be central to the game, though. We'll need dialogues. It's a, a narrative-driven um, educational role-playing game. So dialogues, movement, all of these are going to be core game mechanics that we need to um, take care of in the kind of prelude in the um, preface uh, of milestone here before we can go to chapter one, which is going to introduce the initial medieval theme and the player's kind of home and school environments where they'll be navigating between uh, chapters. Cool. Well, thanks for checking out the live stream. Anonagon, thanks for stopping by. And um, it's nice to chat about games and hopefully your game development uh, journey is going well and you're able to keep uh, publishing your games on mobile platforms if that's your target. And uh, Alan, two or three things for the subscription and uh, hopefully see you around the channel. Cool. Well, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for checking out the stream and have a great day.